Hi, this is Mr. W from sciencemusicvideos.com. Welcome to this lecture about the immune system. I am so happy to be able to teach about this because there is no issue that's more important to our national and planetary recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. Just consider these questions. What does it mean to have immunity to a virus like SARS-CoV-2? How do vaccinations work? What is antigen testing, antibody testing? All of these issues are things you'll learn about in this two lecture series. This video and the next one are connected to interactive tutorials on sciencemusicvideos.com. Watch these videos and complete those tutorials and you'll understand a ton about immunity. All organisms have some kind of way of fighting off infection. Like everyone, you move through the world with your hopes and your dreams, but for many of the other organisms with which we share this planet, you're merely a nutritious, warm, and moist place to live and reproduce. All those organisms need to figure out is how to take up residence inside of you or on your skin. And it's not just organisms, it's viruses too. All of these agents that can cause infectious disease are called pathogens. This picture shows an infection with a pathogenic bacterium called Staphylococcus aureus. And in this case, the infection has made it all the way to the bone. That's a bad infection. So what are these infectious agents that can do us harm? We can divide them into five categories. The first are bacteria. These are the tiny prokaryotic cells that have been around since the emergence of life. 3.5 or so billion years ago. They're everywhere. Many of them are good neighbors, like the bacteria in our guts or the harmless bacteria that normally live on our skin. But some bacteria are pathogens. This includes the streptococcus bacteria that cause strep throat, or the bacteria that cause waterborne diseases like diphtheria and cholera. You might have also heard of certain strains of E. coli that are pathogenic and lead to recalls of meat and lettuce. Though you should know that most E. coli strains are harmless, you can usually fight off bacteria and all these other pathogens with your own immune system. But an amazing thing happened about 100 years ago. Substances called antibiotics were discovered. Antibiotics are substances that interfere with various aspects of bacterial metabolism, such as protein synthesis or building cell walls. As a result, antibiotics can kill the bacteria that are causing an infection or slow down their rate of growth. The discovery of antibiotics was a medical miracle, but a significant health problem has emerged in response to our overuse of antibiotics. Bacteria are evolving resistance to antibiotics. That's connected to certain problematic practices in medicine and agriculture, but that's a topic for another lesson. Because of COVID-19, viruses are the pathogen that's on everybody's mind. Viruses are not organisms. They're obligate intracellular parasites. They're not alive, but they can reproduce themselves by hijacking cells and making those cells into virus factories. Viruses parasitize every living thing, bacteria, plants, fungi, and animals. Viruses cause diseases like chickenpox, measles, mumps, influenza, hepatitis, AIDS, and COVID-19. If you want to learn more, I have a song and a tutorial about viruses. I'm not a cell, not an independent organism, don't even have my own metabolism. I only reproduce myself by taking over cells, then I bust them apart, the one that you feel well. The structure. Protists, single-celled eukaryotes, can also be pathogens. An example is plasmodium, which causes malaria. Plasmodium is carried by mosquitoes and it infects red blood cells. Imagine recurring bouts of debilitating fever as the parasite progresses through its life cycle, destroying billions of your red blood cells in the process. That's malaria. This disease affects 300 to 600 million people worldwide. Fungi are our fourth class of pathogens. If you've ever had athlete's foot or a yeast infection, you've been infected by a pathogenic fungus. Fungi can become deadly in people who have compromised immune systems. Finally, you can be infected by other animals, such as parasitic worms. Here's a diagram of the life cycle of the pork tapeworm. What's amazing is that these parasitic life cycles are far from unusual. There are more parasitic animals than non-parasitic animals. You should read Carl Zimmer's amazing book, Parasite Rex, if you want to learn more. So how do we fight back against all of these pathogens? That's where our immune system comes in. 
The immune system is a layered defense system. Think of a castle with a moat, then a wall, then inner defenses too. We'll walk through all of these in detail, but here's an overview. The first line of defense is the skin and the mucous membranes. The second line are the nonspecific or innate responses. This level includes roving cells that attack invaders and infected cells, proteins that kill bacteria and help fight off viruses, the inflammatory response with its heat and its swelling, and fever. Finally, there are specific responses. B cells that make antibodies, killer T cells that kill cells that have been infected with viruses, and memory cells that give us long-term acquired immunity. Let's start with the skin. Its top layer consists of dead cells that are impermeable to pathogens, but cuts in the skin provide a way for pathogens to enter. Sweat contains substances that inhibit pathogens. That includes lactic acid, which creates an inhospitable pH environment, and salts that create an inhospitable osmotic environment. Finally, we have what are called resident flora that live on our skin. They're harmless to us, and they outcompete pathogens that try to do us harm. Organisms like you and me and every other living thing are open systems. We need to exchange matter and information with the environment. So we have openings in our skin through which we do that. What I mean is our mouths, our nostrils, eyes, ears, anus, vagina, urethra, all of these are called mucous membranes because mucus gets secreted onto them. The sticky mucus traps pathogens. An enzyme called lysozyme that's secreted into the mucus kills bacteria. Finally, cilia, minute hair-like structures that are on cell surfaces, rhythmically move, creating a current that sweeps mucus along, moving it out of the body or down the throat and into our esophagus. That leads to a system for disinfecting food that we take into our bodies. After passing through our mouth and esophagus, food passes into our stomach. There, the acidity kills most pathogens, but not all. There are bacteria that have evolved an ability to survive in our acidic stomachs, and these pathogens are associated with stomach ulcers. So that's the outer boundary, the castle's moat. The next layer consists of non-specific responses. These are also called the innate responses, and that's because you're born with them. That's in contrast to the other type of immunity, acquired or specific immunity, and that's what we'll learn about in the next video in this series. So scan these four categories, and then we'll go into each of them in more detail. The first part of the nonspecific responses that we'll discuss are a group of cells called phagocytes. Phagocytes are a type of white blood cell as opposed to red blood cells that carry oxygen. White blood cells are also called leukocytes. Now, not all white blood cells are phagocytes. Phagocytic cells go around swallowing up other invading cells. And here you see a bacterial cell that's being phagocytized. These phagocytic cells are not only defenders, they're also sentinels. That means they're like guards on a watchtower. They sound the alarm in response to an invasion, and as we'll see, they communicate to cells that mobilize the third level of defense, the specific responses. Now, how do these cells know what to attack? It's all by touch and feel. These phagocytes use receptors on their membranes to feel around for molecules associated with bacteria and other pathogens. When they feel those molecules, they attack. Some names of these phagocytic cells are macrophages and neutrophils. We'll talk about these later and in the next video. Natural killer cells are another part of nonspecific immunity. They target body cells that have been infected by viruses or which have become cancerous. Here you can see how these natural killer cells, number one in the diagram, work. Their job is to patrol the cells that make up the tissues of the body, represented by number two. As with all parts of the immune system, Natural killer cells do that by touch and feel. What they're feeling for is shown at number three. Number three represents a protein called the major histocompatibility complex. This protein is like a flag that says, in my case, these cells belong to Mr. W. In your case, they say that your cells belong to you. This protein is involved in organ rejection following transplants. The natural killer cell knows that a cell is okay because of a complementary fit between the MHC protein and receptors on the natural killer cell that are represented by number four. When cells become infected by viruses, shown in number five, or when they become cancerous, 
their ability to correctly produce an MHC protein is compromised. As a result, the natural killer cell notices that the MHC is lacking and attacks this abnormal tissue cell. Chemical signals called granzymes are released by the natural killer, and these induce the tissue cell to carry out apoptosis or apoptosis, programmed cell death. Another class of molecules secreted by the natural killer are called perforins. That's easy to remember. Perforins perforate the abnormal cell's membrane, also leading to cell destruction. Interferon is another weapon used in the nonspecific response. When a virus, represented by number one, infects a cell, the cell releases interferon. Interferon will be picked up by receptors in neighboring cells. If those cells are healthy, like cell three, then signaling pathways are activated that induce changes that protect these cells from viral infection. If the cells are infected, like cell four, then interferon induces apoptosis in these cells. Complement is a family of proteins that can work on their own to inhibit bacterial growth by blowing holes in bacterial cell walls. They're even more effective when they work with antibodies, a part of the specific immune response, and we'll learn about that in the next video. We've all had the experience of having an injury and experiencing the heat, swelling, and redness known as inflammation. This is also part of nonspecific immunity. Here's what's going on with inflammation on a cellular level. In response to an infection shown at one, immune system cells called mast cells at two release chemicals called histamines at three. Capillaries are the smallest blood vessels and histamine makes these capillaries leaky. The capillary is shown at one and you can see how the cell junctions have become looser. This allows a very common type of phagocyte called a neutrophil at two to leave the capillary and enter the infected cells where it goes on the attack. Fluid also leaves the capillary leading to swelling. Here you can see a photo and a cartoon of a neutrophil devouring a bacterium. Enough of this gorging on bacteria will kill the neutrophil. Millions and billions of these dead white blood cells accumulate as pus. Pus is dead white blood cells. Fever is another part of the nonspecific immune response. Elevated temperature is thought to ramp up the immune system. All mammals do this, and even our exothermic cousins, like reptiles, are thought to move into warmer environments, like the sun, to help them fight off infection. So that's it for the nonspecific responses. If you thought this was cool, you'll love the next lesson, which is about the specific responses. But here's a treat. I've taken everything you need to know about the nonspecific immune system and put it into a song. Enjoy it. If you've already seen it, then please remember to go over to sciencemusicvideos.com to complete the immune system tutorials. Here we go. It's a dangerous world full of pathogenic germs, viruses and fungi and bacteria and worms. They're trying to invade you, to them your food and shelter, and once they get inside it, send your system help to skelter. But you've got a system to fight back for recovering your health from infectious attack. With weapons that leave these pathogens and ruins, yeah, we're talking about the system that makes us immune. It's the immune system, sworn to protect you from dangerous pathogens that try to infect you. Three layers of defense keep the germs away, letting us live yet another Day. Skin and mucous members first, then innate defenses Defending off invaders that breach our fences Then specific responses with lymphocytes B and T Let's learn about immunity Our outermost defense is our impermeable skin Dead outer cells lined with fibrous keratin Covered with secreted lactic acid and lysozyme A bacteria dissolving enzyme At openings like noses there's a mucous membrane lining A viscous protein fluid trap of pathogen confining And pathogens that enter through our mouth can die quite miserably When they're dissolved inside our stomach sour acidity But even with these barriers some pathogens break through Entering through cuts or riding mucus into you The next of defense is not specific and innate We share it with the plants and fungi and infer you're born with these defenses, that's why they're called innate. They're implemented when infection starts, no need to wait. They consist of cells and proteins that make nonspecific moves against those foreign entities that enter into you. The primary components here are white blood cells, sentinels or guards who respond when all's not well. 
for leukocytes. They fight invaders in generic ways, engulfing them or chemically blowing them away. It's the immune system, sworn to protect you from dangerous pathogens or try to infect you. Three layers of defense keep the germs away, letting us live yet another day. Skin and mucous membranes first, then innate defenses, for fending off invaders that breach our fences. Then specific responses with lymphocytes B and T, let's learn about immunity. Inflammation's a key part of the innate response. You know it from the swelling and the way a wound feels hot. Tissue damage from infections or injuries causes leukocytes like mast cells to release histamines, which makes capillaries leak through vasodilation, leads to redness and to swelling and a painful sensation. Sentinel cells and tissues emit chemical alarms that draw defenders to the scene defending us from harm. The first cell to arrive could be a neutrophil, the most abundant type of white blood cell. They're phagocytes, engulfing viruses and germs, devouring pathogens like Robin eating worms. These neutrophils gorge themselves until they die defending us. The cellular remains accumulate as pus. Innate responses to anything but simple. Remember that each time you see the pus inside a pimple. Another phagocyte is called a macrophage, which means big eater they attack with rage. Dendritic cells are phagocytes too, patrolling beneath the skin and in the lungs and other tissues. A fever is a body-wide systemic inflammation. The higher temperature inhibits germ replication and might also enhance immune cells' phagocytic action as fever ramps up our body's chemical reactions. It's the immune system, sworn to protect you from dangerous pathogens or try to infect you. Three layers of defense keep the germs away, letting us live yet another day. Skin and mucous membranes first, then innate defenses, for fending off invaders that breach our fences. Then specific responses with lymphocytes B and T, let's learn about immunity. Natural killer cells are also on the innate team detecting body cells that display abnormal proteins indicating viral infection or cancer. And when they meet abnormal cells, here's a deadly answer. These killers release perforins that perforate the holes in infected cells' membranes, making them explode, along with secretion of deadly granzymes that induce infected cells to commit suicide. Even the infected cells try to do their part, secreting interferons, proteins that make it hard for viruses to penetrate the cell membranes of uninfected nearby cells, which keeps them in the game. Complements another part of innate immunity. It's made of 30 proteins that work as a community to open holes in membranes of invading bacteria, destroying them and clearing out infection from that area. Now that's innate immunity, part one of our song. So join us in Immune Part 2 so you can sing along as we learn about defenses acquired and specific. Immunity, it's really terrific. It's the immune system sworn to protect you from dangerous pathogens or try to infect you. Three layers of defense keep the germs away. Letting us live yet another day. Skin and mucous membranes first, then innate defenses. For fending off invaders that breach our fences. Then specific responses with lymphocytes B and T. Let's learn about immunity. Thanks so much. Please remember to subscribe to my channel and head on over to sciencemusicvideos.com where you can really learn this material by doing a series of interactive tutorials about it. Thank you and I'll see you at the next video.